Hi again, it's Miko, and it's Christmas, and I'm going to do 12 days in a row. Quick question. If there's a stain on your tablecloth, does that matter? Nah. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, thanks for subscribing, and if you haven't yet, do it now. Today I thought, well it's Christmas Eve, uh, it's nine o'clock, and I have my mum coming round. So there's only going to be three of us, um, but we live in a small flat, as you can see, like, this is why I'm sitting at this lovely table with this beautiful B&M tablecloth that I haven't ironed. And I'm not going to. Because why? So I thought while I'm doing my table we could have a quick chat about tomorrow and what it's going to be like for people like us. Because Christmas is hard when you have a chronic illness. Because most of the trouble is you spend half the time preparing for this one day and by the time the day comes round you've completely killed yourself and you can't enjoy it. And I've stopped doing that now. Completely stopped. And I'm going to tell you how I do it. Um, specifically if I can I will leave Christmas Eve with no going out the house. Any tasks that need to be done are in the house on Christmas Eve. And anything I haven't got done by that point ain't getting done. It's not. And I don't care because it's one day. And neither should you. Because this is the thing. We overthink Christmas. And when we're chronically ill, there's some things we have to let slide. So I used to clean the whole house before Christmas, regardless of whether it was dirty or whether it needed it. It was just something I did before Christmas. I don't do that anymore. I mean, I clean all, I clean as, you know, bleh. that's because it's lies. I clean all the time. Don't hate it. Um, I'm not very good at it, but I do as much as I can. But today, you know, there's certain things I couldn't do. I'm having an awful lot of problem with my back and my hips, so I can't really bend up and down an awful lot. Sitting too long, standing too long, nightmare. So I just did what I could. There's parts of the corners of the floors that have Fluffy little dog hair bunnies, talking about fluffy little dog hair bunnies, hold on. What are you doing? I can hear you. I can hear you. Where are you? Come here. Come here. Hello. This is Maisie. She's going to help today, aren't you? You're going to help? No, probably not. She's probably going to get in the road, she's probably going to wonder what's going on with all the lights and things and she's going to keep coming back in and out. But she's cute, so it's fine. Hello? Hi. Say hello. Okay. I stopped, I stopped really pushing myself to my limits because what I was finding is I was using up all my energy by Christmas Day. And Christmas Day, last year I think I came, had to come home from my in-laws because I was too unwell. So this, I've really scaled it back I'm not getting worked up about things, I'm not worrying about things. It's it's a roast dinner with presents. Do you want to go now? Have you had enough? Ah, I'm getting kisses. I'm getting kisses. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right, on you go. The oven's on. That's what you're hearing in the background. It's the air oven when you switch it off it takes like half an hour to stop making noises like it's taken off. No, no, no. You either have to come and stay or go. You want all she's done today because it's Christmas and people keep giving her treats and things and ask for food and she's driving me up the wall. Um, but yeah, so I stopped doing that. This year having people over for food, everything I bought is trays. Slide it in the oven, times, done. Uh, went to M&S, fancy. I love going to M&S like a tink and really winding up all the middle class people, it's great. Um, Marks and Spencer's for anyone that doesn't know, it's really kind of expensive food place. But it's a treat, it's Christmas Day and it, it's quite good because they tend to make all the sides go in for the same amount of time at the same temperature and then all your main parts go in. It's really well done. To be honest with you, I wouldn't know because I'm so bad with numbers that Campbell does that anyway. I'm going to shut this door and see if I can get rid of this noise. Now, you're probably looking around and thinking, yeah, easy for you, you don't have kids. And that's true. So yeah, I'm not staying up till two in the morning wrapping countless presents and um, making sure everything's ready for, for dinner at the same time. So what, oh God, I'm having some bother with my... Uh, uh, that was pathetic. 
with not having kids, I don't really have to stay up till two in the morning wrapping presents while also making sure that everything is prepped food-wise for the next day. Um, it's a bit late to start giving you advice about that now because this video is going up quite late on Christmas Eve, so <laughs> next year. Um, but I would say just make sure you're asking for help. Just ask, like, don't feel you have to do all of this on your own to make the perfect Christmas. Like, if the family's going to enjoy it, the family can work together to create it, so ask for help. <laughs> Just ask me. Now, as for wrapping the kids' presents, I don't have kids and I can't give an awful lot of advice about that. But just don't overthink it. You know, you don't have to wrap every single present individually. It doesn't have to look like Cinderella's castle with a bunch of presents underneath it. Once those kids are in that room, the paper's off in like half a second anyway. So, you know, improvise. You know, you can put it in a Christmas bag if you can just put some things on the floor and put some paper over it, you know? And just make it as easy as possible for you. Because bearing in mind, like, the easier it is for you, the easier it is on everyone else as well. Because if you burn yourself out, you're out of the game, you know? And that's, I've made that mistake many, many times. So I would say just improvise with the presents. Just do what you can, don't force yourself. Because if you're going to stay up till three, 2, 3 in the morning wrapping presents, and then you have to get up at 6 to make your, you're never going to make it through the day. You're not. So just don't overthink it. Don't worry about it. It's, kids just want the presents, don't they? So wrap the big ones or wrap the little ones, leave, leave the other ones. That's what I would do. Now in the morning can be a bit of a rush, especially if you've got family to visit. We're going to visit family in the morning at about half 10. And then once we've done that, Incentives. actually, what, what are these? Oh, 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 okay. Okay, I've only got three people because there's a dirty mark on that one. Um, yeah, we're going out at half ten to visit family. Once we've visited family, we'll come back down the road, get the food on, go and pick up my mum, come back, have our dinner, and then I'll lock the door. And I don't let anyone in. And I don't go out because by that time I'm done. Um, so just make sure that in the morning that you're just trying to relax, make sure somebody else is picking up all the wrapping paper and tidying up after everybody. You have done your bit the night before. Now let's get to the difficult bit, dinner. Dinner has many problems for people with a chronic illness. Um, I'd say the first and foremost is family. Especially if you're visiting family you don't see very often or family you maybe have a problematic relationship with. Um, the questions that you get repeatedly asked by people who don't see you often, oh, you look much better, so you must be cured. Um, are you still in pain? Do you still have fibromyalgia? All the things you really don't want to be talking about on Christmas Day, do you know what I mean? Like, I want to be eating sweets and watching telly and, quite frankly, I'd rather do anything than have a medical exam at a dinner table. So what I tend to do now, um, and it's not a problem for me because it's just my mum coming, but in, in, in groups and things like that, I just ignore the question and turn the, the, the conversation another way. Because for me, the first few years, I, I did kind of worry about how people perceived me because this is such a complex condition that some days I can look much better than others. Some days I can look fine, but I'm actually in agony. Some days I can look rough, but I actually feel fine. So it's a really complex thing. Uh, and it is really hard for other people to understand, I do get that. Um, but I don't want to be interrogated at Christmas about my health. So just shut that conversation down, change the subject, keep moving on. If somebody is really going to be persistent about it, maybe take them aside and just say, we have this conversation another day, you know. Just be honest, keep your mind fresh and your mind happy. The last thing you want to be doing on Christmas Day is talking about your illness over roast turkey. How did I do this? Now, talking about roast turkey, I have hmm, ah, recently not been able to eat that much, so I'm kind of concerned that sitting down to this big massive meal is a, it's going to be really overwhelming, and especially, I don't know about you, but it, sometimes it can be in there as well if you're having pro stomach problems with your fibro. Just getting a massive plate of food put down to you can actually really be quite overwhelming. So what I do is I make myself up a smaller plate because you can always go back. So I make myself up a smaller plate than everybody else. If anybody comments on it, you know, if anybody makes smart arse comments about whether you're dieting or something like that, again, ignore it, move the subject on. There's no point addressing any of these things on Christmas Day. You're never going to solve anybody, especially if they're being deliberately snarky because they maybe they don't um, understand your condition and they maybe have suspicions that it might not be a real thing because that's something that people with chronic illness face all the time. 
even from family, and you would not believe how, how frequent that happens because it's just such a complex condition. With the cooking, the kids have had their fun, they've opened their presents, put them to work. Actually, is that illegal? Just ask them to do some stuff. I, don't, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Right, hold on. That's not it, is it? And the best bit after dinner is you're quite entitled to go for a nap and it's fully socially acceptable on Christmas Day. I mean, for us, it's socially acceptable. I mean, for us, it's socially acceptable anyway, but like for, for everybody, for Abel's and everything, it's socially acceptable to have a nap on Christmas Day. So if you need one, have one. In the same way that if you need help, ask for it. Excusing yourself, for instance, chronic illness doesn't play the game. And I know I said I was going to set the table while talking to you, um, but it appears I can't do two things at once, which is kind of disappointing. Um, but yeah. Well, I just stuff it in, like. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Cha-ching. There might be times throughout the day at Christmas when you don't feel well. Um, we don't get to control our conditions. These things definitely happen. So if you have to excuse yourself, excuse yourself. Um, uh, Christmas can be a really hard day, for, even for able people, so uh, you know, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with excusing yourself for a little, little while, even if it's 10 minutes just to get a bit of fresh air, a bit of calm and quiet, because I know with my fibro, the more noise I take in, the more stimulation I take in, can kind of set things off, so definitely give yourself breaks uh, if you need them. I actually heard about a really good thing on Sarah Millican, the comedian's um, Twitter page, where she's doing this thing, hashtag join in for people on Christmas Day who are maybe alone or maybe just can't deal with the cheer, maybe don't have any family. And it's been going for nine years and apparently it's really, really good. So if you are struggling tomorrow and you just want to take a 10 minute break and you want to use that hashtag, it can sometimes be really good to speak to people in the same boat as you, the same situation. It can make you feel less alone. Um, especially if you are spending Christmas alone, then it's going to be a great way to connect with other people also doing the same thing as you. Indulgence. Um, Indulgence is a hard one for anyone with fibro because honestly I feel like I, I guilt myself because there are things called anti-inflammatory foods, it's, it's um, a way to try and control your pain through your diet. But at this time of the year, I'm not gonna lie, it's fucking hard, like really hard. There's sweets flying about all over the place, people who, I don't drink alcohol, but people who do, there's alcohol going about, everything is incredibly calorific and fattening, great, it's time of year, enjoy it, but obviously enjoy it but if you know something is going to hurt you you really have to weigh up whether it's going to be worth it if it's going to be the best thing you've eaten all day and you're going to really enjoy it but you know you're going to have a little upset a little upset stomach I've really just undermined that you know you're going to have an, un an upset stomach or it's going to give you sort of like a headache or anything like that just have half of what you were going to and then see how you get on and then maybe have the other half later on you know um, i don't think we should be sitting here denying ourselves everything to try and, and sort of maintain this um, as close to healthy life as we can. This isn't our fault. You know, what, why should, on Christmas Day, should we be eating anti-inflammatory foods and things like that? You know your body, you know what your body can take. If you don't quite know your body yet, if you're new to this illness, just like I said, small and steady, slow and steady, just try everything a little bit at a time. Don't push yourself physically, don't push yourself with the eating and just let the day float over you try to let the day flow over you instead of letting the day control you. Because the more that you get stressed out, the more likely it is that you're going to bring on more pain or anxiety. Um, if you have sort of mental health conditions as well, I have anxiety, but if, if you have mental health conditions, um, Christmas Day can be incredibly hard. So just make sure that you're giving yourself the time you need to just balance yourself and not get overwhelmed in the head because that can really, especially for people with fibro and other sort of conditions like this, it can actually set off you know physical reactions as well. Stress does not help this condition. So try to bear that in mind as well. It's Christmas Day, but again, roast dinner with presents. It's not that deep. Oh no, oh, what's upside down? <laughs> I thought it was 
look kind of a bit weird. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay. Yeah, I probably should have ironed it, but don't care. Do you know what I think I did last year? I ironed it on the table. <laughs> Let's put it out and iron the table. Why not? I mean, it's just an iron board without the cover. What was I saying? No, seriously. On the channel, I'm going to be doing Miko's 12 Chronic Days. Um, I'm going to be uploading every day for 12 days, um, unless there's any unforeseen circumstances. Because I'm going to be uploading every 12 days, the videos probably won't be of the same quality. We're probably going to just be having a chat. I'll bring you along with whatever I'm doing that day. And I think it's quite good because it's about high time we got to know each other. As usual, if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments down below and we'll have a chat about it. If there's anything, that, any tips you, you might have for other people, I got really excited there. Whoa, tips! Um, any tips that you might have for others, that you know, you can share tips in the comments and things like that. Really would be nice to have a little community going to um, support each other, especially at this time of the year. So have yourself a merry little Christmas. Don't push it. I'm telling you, do not push it. Oh fucking hell, that sounds like a chipmunk. <sighs> Bye. Tata! Oh no, that's not happening, no, I'm not doing that. I lost my actual centerpiece. <laughs> Can't find it. It's in the house. I only live in a two bedroom flat. Can't find it. Come on then. Oh, watch my back. Oh, watch my back. Oh, that's it. That's it. You can't help. It's cinnamon. No, 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 no. You can't have it. No. Can't have it. That's not for eating. It's not food. Not food. Oh, it's devastated. Right, you need to sit a bit, I need to use my hands, so you need to sit a bit more steady. Okay. Yes! Wine clothing! Not my jumper, don't be smart. That's like a glove. Right guys, I'm off. Hope Santa's good to you. Hi again! No, that was way too fucking good. Um, do you want to go back? Oh, you're going to annoy me, aren't you? Do you want to go back to that? Um, just getting a massive put of... A massive... A massive put of foot? Just getting a massive foot put down. Thumbnail. Fucking blethering, just load of shite. Absolutely shut your mouth, Zane. It's gone. It's gone. Hope Santa's good to you. Okay, try that without being a dick, so. Hope Santa. Oh, spit all over the table.